9.1 has launched and Resto Druids are looking pretty promising. There are some changes in the patch that we will cover, but overall, the spec will feel very similar to Season 1. And as the meta develops, we will be updating you on all important PvP changes including tier lists and gameplay guides. So if you're wanting to keep up, be sure to subscribe below. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Capped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Resto Druid gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on how to heal, CC, use cooldowns, and exactly how to execute your playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill capped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know all from as little as $4.99 a month. While 9.1 introduced massive overhauls to many classes and specs, Wrestler Druid was fairly untouched, which honestly is pretty nice. But a few things did change, and unfortunately, there were some minor nerfs to some defensive abilities. Frenzied Regeneration was reduced by 15% in PvP after being one of the best game-wide self-heals in Season 1. On top of that, the infamous well-honed Instincts Conduit, which was sometimes called Auto Frenzy, had its cooldown increased, making it proc less often. Resto did make minor gains in the PvP talent department, gaining Keeper of the Grove as a new option, buffing Tranquility Healing, and making it uninterruptible. This came with a redesign to High Winds, which now also reduces healing by 30% on targets that leave Cyclone. Yes, even Wrestler Druids have a healing reduction effect in Season 2. With this overview out of the way, let's recap everything you need to know to set up your Druid for Season 2. 9.1 didn't bring any changes to racial abilities, so your best race for both factions is still the same. For Alliance, Night Elf remains the best race by far for PvP. The primary reason for this is Shadow Meld. This is one of the most broken racials as a healer because it can be used while drinking, sometimes preventing your opponents from interrupting your mana region. Skilled players will also use Shadow Meld to avoid CC and damage. It can be used in the middle of an enemy spell cast to drop targets or it can even be used the moment a CC lands negating the effect entirely. Finally, it can also be used to get really quick restyles in cat form allowing you to stun targets with rake if you're playing feral affinity. Torin is still the best race for Horde not only due to Warstom but also because of its passives called Endurance and Brawn. Warstom is useful as a general CC tool and with its 2 second duration, you're able to chain it together with Cyclone or Entangling Roots. Endurance is really strong as a passive ratio because it scales the healing done by Frenzied Regeneration and the Absorption from Fleshcraft. Finally, Brawn is an often overlooked passive for Druid but is equally as important due to the increased crit chance of regrowth. With that out of the way, let's go over your optimal talent builds for 9.1 Arena. For your first row, Scenarion Ward is still your best choice by far. Not only is the heal good on its own, but it is undispellable and it affects your mastery. Perhaps most importantly though is that its healing overtime effect can be extended with a Verdant Infusion Legendary, giving you 18 seconds of a super strong hot. In the majority of cases, Wild Charge is the best talent on your second row. It is super flexible allowing you to quickly push into the enemy team with a cat form pounce or to escape enemy attacks on z-axis with its human form effect. But you might want to consider renewal in very specific situations, like against melee cleaves that will train you and prevent you from kiting. Feral Death Knight is one comp we might see more of in 9.1 and this setup can definitely train you while preventing you from escaping. In any case, select this talent if you are really worried about your survivability in a specific matchup. All three of your talent options for the third row are uniquely valuable, with Guardian Affinity being a good default option. Selecting this talent will give you access to Frenzied Regeneration which has enormous value in matchups where you will be under pressure. Feral Affinity is a more aggressive option and is a good choice when playing with casters because you can utilize cat form stuns in order to set up kills with your team. It is incredibly popular in 2v2 where damage isn't as high because of its ability to contribute to kills with your partner. Balance Affinity is rarely used by top players but it is a really niche option worth considering into mage teams because you can cast Cyclone in Moonkin form without worrying about Polymorph. The most consistent option on your 4th row is Mighty Bash, mostly due to its ability to be chained with Cyclone or other CC effects on your team. Overall, it's just a really good ability both offensively and defensively, especially when your team lacks a stun effect. Mass Entanglement can be good in really specific matchups like against BM Hunters or Unholy DKs in order to get AoE CC on pets. If you're playing with a mage, you might want to use Bash instead since you can mess up DRs on your partner's root effects. Soul of the Forest is by far your most consistent option on your 5th row because it gives you more flexibility on how to manage damage. Using Soul Procs with a Rejuvenation will allow you to get stronger hots which can be extended with a Verdant Infusion Legendary. Using it with Regrowth gives you a really strong burst heal especially when combined 
with nature swiftness. If you're a beginner, you can choose to play with Tree of Life as an emergency defensive cooldown, but we really don't recommend this for competitive PvP since it is just way less consistent. Overgrowth is your best choice for the next tier because it allows you to instantly ramp up your healing after leaving a CC. Instead of needing to press multiple globals to stabilize your partner, you can simply press one button, also saving you mana. It's important to note that Cuptomania was moved into an arcane-only PvP talent, making Overgrowth even stronger into most mage teams now that they can't simply steal all of your hots. There is a potential use case for Inner Peace now with the addition of the new Keeper of the Grove PvP talent. This might be a better option into some Affection Warlock spell cleaves that deal a ton of AoE damage or in RBGs where you will be healing teamfights. For your final tier, Germination is by far your best choice. Its additional heal gives you more overall throughput while benefiting your mastery and also giving you dispel protection on your other hots. Moving on to PvP talents, your choices really depend on the opponents you're facing. But regardless of who is on the other team, Focused Growth is your only default PvP talent option. Not only does it give you more healing, but it also allows you to be more mana efficient. Anytime there's a melee DPS on the other team, you generally want to be playing with Thorns and sometimes Reactive Resin, especially in melee cleaves. Thorns acts as a pseudo-defensive cooldown and encourages melee DPS to stop attacking their target unless they want to take massive Thorns damage. Reactive Resin gives you some additional healing into melee DPS by giving you a small heal on targets with rejuvenation and extending its duration by 3 seconds whenever they are crit, allowing you to be more mana efficient while helping your throughput. High Winds is a good neutral option if you plan on playing more aggressive with Cyclones. This is especially true if you are playing with a setup-based comp like Rogue Mage since you will be cloning a lot anyway giving you more value you both offensively and defensively every time you do. Disentanglement is another generalist option that sees the most value against classes with multiple snares like mages and DKs, but it can be a bit inefficient due to the high mana cost of efflorescence. The same can be said about early spring, which might see play in arena against affliction warlock spell cleaves, but is more common as an AoE healing option in RBGs. Speaking of RBGs, Keeper of the Grove is a newly added talent in 9.1 that should be a default choice in RBGs, and even in 3v3 against spell cleaves with high AoE damage such as Affliction Warlock Shadow Priest. Mark of the Wild is strong into very specific specs like Elemental Shamans, Balance Druids, and Fire Mages. Not only will it give you slight damage reduction but it also gives you some additional dispel protection. Finally, Master Shapeshifter is still your aggressive talent choice if you're playing as Feral Affinity, giving you more damage with your bleeds. We really don't recommend this in 3v3 but it is a good choice in 2v2 where less healing is needed. Even though there was some slight rebalancing into Covenants in 9.1, your best option is still the same. Necrolord continues to be the strongest choice in PvP for the same reasons earlier this expansion. Since the release of Shadowlands, Fleshcraft actually received a buff, absorbing twice as much damage since the expansion launch. Adaptive Swarm is still the best active Covenant ability by far, empowering your hots, giving you dispel protection, and even being on the Shadow Spell School, allowing you to use it while interrupted on casts. Just like Fleshcraft, this ability has even received buffs since its original release. We don't really see any other Covenant being better than Necrolord in 9.1. As an additional bonus, it is even the preferred option for Feral Druids, and even some balanced Druids are making the swap to the Maldraxxus Warlords in the current patch. So if you plan on playing other specs, this is by far the best option for you. The Soulbind system was expanded in 9.1, including more rows for additional conduits and abilities. Plague Divisor Merolith continues to be the best choice because it has the strongest Soulbind abilities and one of the most optimized conduit selections. Volatile Solvent was actually buffed in 9.1 and now always grants the Humanoid Mastery buff for 2 minutes anytime you channel Fleshcraft. This grants you 120 mastery, which winds up being a 1.7% increase overall. It should be noted that the buff cannot be dispelled, meaning you will have a mastery bonus as long as you are using Fleshcraft often in Arena. Unfortunately, Ooze's Frictionless Coding was nerfed by 50% in PvP this patch, but it still remains the best option for this row. Having an auto proc shield is always beneficial in PvP, especially since it is also tied to a potency conduit. Ultimate Form has also been buffed since the beginning of the expansion and remains a huge reason why this Soulbind is so strong in PvP. Having 4 seconds of card control immunity during the Fleshcraft channel and after it ends allows you to potentially preserve your trinket and other defensive cooldowns if you manage to immune a CC. One of the newly added Soulbind abilities in 9.1 might be pretty broken. Undulating maneuvers will cause any damage above 80% to be spread out over 5 seconds. 
This is able to break some forms of CC like Dragon's Breath from Mages, but other CC like Polymorph and Ring of Frost seem unaffected. This might just be bugged for now, but it could potentially be game-changing if it isn't hotfixed. Kevin's Oozling is the new end cap ability for this soulbind but really isn't that exciting. It gives you a 6% damage buff on targets when you use Adaptive Swarm, while giving your party members a really minor shield. And with an expanded soulbind system, this means more conduit options. So let's take a look at what you should be running this patch. For Endurance Conduits, Well-Honed Instincts is still by far your best option and should be played no matter what. It can proc and stunts and save you from certain death. Just be aware that it gets easily countered by mind games from priests. Innate Resolve works really well in matchups where you will take any damage especially if you will get trained. And Earth and Vigor can be used as a final option and can even be utilized in the starting room to get you the biggest possible shield from Fleshcraft by using it after you go bare form with this conduit. Evolve Swarm, Floral Recycling, and Ready for Anything are your three most important potency conduits. Evolve Swarm is really good in 2v2 where Adaptive Swarm will bounce between fewer targets while Ready for Anything and Floral Recycling give you stronger burst healing and are really well optimized for 3v3. Born of the Wilds and Tireless Pursuit are still your best finesse conduits. If you plan on moving around the map a lot or will need to kite and avoid CC, we suggest using Tireless Pursuit since it gives you a massive mobility increase. Gear has changed a bit in 9.1, including some new options you might want to consider from PvE. In any case, PvP gear will now scale up 13 eye levels anytime you are in instance PvP, meaning your unranked conquest pieces will have a base eye level of 220 and a PvP eye level of 233. Gear can still be upgraded based on rating up to rank 5 at 2100, and honor will still be used to upgrade every piece. Now though, you will need to win at least one game to upgrade to the highest ranking available. For the most part, you should focus Focus gearing primarily with conquest points, getting capped every week, and then looting your vault every Tuesday. Prioritize buying your weapon the first week it is available as it will give you the biggest stat increases. And as a reminder, your stat priority is still intellect, then versatility, haste, mastery, and crit in that order. You should base your conquest purchases on whatever gives you the highest intellect and versatility increases, focusing on gear that has both haste and versatility. For trinkets, having a medallion is essential, and we highly recommend using an emblem trinket despite their nerfs in 9.1, since it gives you a huge increase to your primary stat. If you want to play more aggressively in 2v2, or if you are playing a caster cleave in 3v3, you might want to consider the new gladiator shackles trinket as it may catch enemy teams off guard. There are some new PvE gear you can get from Sanctum of Domination that has special sockets for new gems called Shards of Domination. These effects will be nerfed by 50% in PvP, so they aren't completely necessary in Arena. If you manage to get your hands on a piece of gear with a shard socket, just make sure it has versatility on it. Otherwise, your Conquest PvP gear is probably better. But please, don't sweat it. You won't need this new gear to be competitive. If you get it, great. If you don't, well, no worries. Although some new legendaries have been added in 9.1, your best option is still the same. Verdant Infusion continues to be best in slot for Season 2 for a few reasons. For one, it means that your healing rotation feels less awkward since you won't need to reapply Hoss after using Swiftman, giving you more flexibility with how you use your Soul of the Forest procs. It also works really well with Overgrowth, allowing you to instantly extend the duration of all your hots on a target, and its interaction with Cenarian Ward gives it enormous value, giving you 10 additional seconds for one of your best heals. Note that in 9.1, you can now craft this legendary on cloaks. We really don't recommend anything else for PvP since Verdant Infusion is by far the best option for healing. But if you want to play as aggressive as possible, you can choose Draft of Deep Focus. This should only be played in 2v2 as Feral Affinity with a class that is good at avoiding damage since your healing will be incredibly nerfed. There were some new Covenant-specific legendaries including Unbridled Swarm for Necrolord, but there is almost no chance these will be better than Verdant Infusion for any arena this expansion, but they might be useful in some RBG teamfights. Finally, let's go over some important macros you should use to really elevate your gameplay. The one macro you need no matter what is a Nature Swiftness Regrowth macro. Putting your NS with your heal will allow you to burst heal instantly when the macro is pressed. You can even throw in a slash stop casting at the start of the macro to make sure this combo always goes off. As far as quality of life macros are concerned, we highly recommend having an Innervate macro for yourself, allowing you to always cast Innervate on your character regardless of who you are targeting. Having a cancel form macro is also good to have, especially against other druids or against hunters for avoiding hibernate and scare beast. Here, we have one tied into travel form, allowing us to instantly cancel our form whenever the button is pressed. You should also have hardy 123 macros for your dispel, ensuring that you can quickly remove CC from any of your teammates. Do this by adding at party 1 or target 
Nature equals Party 1 with Nature's Cure. Having focus macros is also incredibly useful and we highly recommend having some for all of your control abilities, including Cyclone, Entangling Roots, and Hibernate. Finally, there are some macro commands that swap abilities on your action bar depending on what talents you have selected. This is useful for your second row of talents when choosing between Wild Charge and Renewal, your third row of talents for choosing between your affinities, and your fourth row of talents for choosing your CC ability. And there you have our Resto Druid intro guide for 9.1. The spec is looking really good this patch, but you might need to make some minor adjustments going into Season 2. And if you want to stay up to date on all 9.1 content, be sure to subscribe below. If you're looking for a guaranteed way to improve, check out skillcap.com slash wow to see the rest of the druid course and get access to all of our exclusive arena commentaries from some of the best wrestler druids in the world. As always though, thanks for watching. We hope you join us for an exciting season.